Name another podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss talk. Yeah, everybody on it. Boss talk. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official, outstanding, motivational. That's when you're married, you gotta say all that, man. <laughs> Mr. Baker's in the building. What's going on? No, 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 my dear. Well, go on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, threads, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. Just look up Boss Talk Podcast 101 and you'll find us. If you wanna see our full length interviews without no interruptions, exclusive content, go to our YouTube channel and go under membership you'll find our videos if you want to sign up for a membership that's underneath this video you'll see the link to how to join our membership click it you get to it real real easy and we thank you in advance for the man, support man check it man hey man listen man make sure you do what Mr. Jamaica said but this guy right here don't need no introduction everybody know him we had a guy that was chatting everything about him when he was gone this dude was incarcerated and I ain't gonna lie to you that's how I found out about him you know what I'm saying really? yes I'm, finna, I'm gonna break it all down he know where I'm going with this this man right here man did some things uh, if the song fit, then, uh, man, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? This guy right here, man, he he been known. That's all I'm going to tell you. We're mm. about to get into it, man. Goldmouth is in the building, man. Uh, um, Goldmouth. Yo, y'all, you know what I... I wish Mel, man, was home. Goldmouth was free. Let me tell you something. Yeah. When you got home, he wish he was free. Y'all linked up. How's it going, man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this know, was the song. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Um... Yeah, we can get into that shit a little later, man. I know. <laughs> I had to give it up to you because that's yeah, a, boss up. talk hit different, okay? Yeah, this ain't so. no regular. I told you already. It's like, just think of me sitting under the tree. You pulled up in the, uh, when you left here, Monte Carlo SS. <laughs> you feel me? Gray with the with the with the with the gray rims on. It, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and I'll ride I'll ride Benz and shit back then. Yeah, well, okay, me? okay. The Benz. Yeah, we had to put the old shit on the side. Yeah, we, we okay, now, okay. You pull up on me. I'm under the tree. Some yeah. niggas come in the Benz because they're from out of town. Yeah. So they coming in from the city down to the country. I'm sitting under the tree and gold mouth get out. Yeah. Now you on Boss Talk 101. Now I'm on Boss Talk 101. <laughs> That's all it is, okay? Let's do it. Oh, man. Let's so, go. get to it, baby. So, a gold mouth. Born and raised in... Macon, Georgia. Macon, Georgia. Macon, Georgia. Macon. For sure, for sure. For sure. So That's it, right? Heard, yeah, I've heard about Macon. What, what... Okay, people watching. What is it about Macon, Georgia that stands out? I mean, Macon is, is, it has a very rich history as far as music is concerned, you know what I'm saying? Like a, a lot of great musicians came from the city. Like who? Yeah. Like Otis Redding, you know what I'm saying? Sitting on the dock of the bay. Yeah, 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 Otis Redding. Okay. my daddy's favorite song before he passed away, yeah. man. That, that, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, you don't know the song, do you? I know the song, don't, don't, don't do you, me. Well, whistle it then. I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't whistle. Let's keep going, man. So, so yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, she's Jamaican. She know, no, I she know, know the song. She know Patra and all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know that Shut type of shit. Yeah. Bougie Bunny. If I could see, I would see the song. Okay. You don't know about no damn Otis Red. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, you. Nah, she know. Look how she looking there. We know Boss Lady know, for yeah, sure. Know. Let's get it, though. So, um, were you raised with your mom and dad together in the household? Yeah, originally that's how it was to the crack era hit. How old were you at that time? I was around like eight or nine. Eight or nine, then they split up. Yeah, they split up. They got caught up in the in, in the crack okay. fire that that terrorized the you know what I'm saying devastated the, the ghettos and stuff. So that that created a great separation. Mm -hmm. And you know because of that, um, you know me and my sisters, we basically had to get out how we live. So you're the only boy. Well, I had an older brother. I got an older brother, excuse me, but um, he wasn't raised with us. Mm. He wasn't raised on my side of the family. He was raised on his father's side, so oh, you know, okay. I was raised with my, on, on my, you know, with my mother. Mm -hmm. So um, basically, I was the I was the oldest brother. I was the brother, but brother. I, I was the man of the household. Were the yeah. sisters younger? You know, no, my sisters were older. Oh, so you're the baby? Well, no, nah, my I got a baby sister okay. under me. Okay, but you know, what I'm saying most of my sisters was older. Mm -hmm. Um. So I had to pretty much, you know, 
I had to pretty much be the be the man of the household, mm. though, you know what I'm saying? Because I, my father was in prison, mm-hmm. and my sisters they were girls, and so you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a it's a man's world, mm-hmm. you know. What where where there's you know responsibility is a, is a concern. So mm-hmm. I um had to find my way. So you say your father was in prison, but whenever they split up, how long after they split up did he go to prison, or did he go straight to prison? Why they split up? You know, when they had got on, when my mother and my father got on drugs, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, when crack devastated the the urban communities, it was like, it was like motherfucking Hurricane Katrina. So, you know, everything started falling apart at that time. And, you know, it wasn't long, you know, before, you know, we had went de- dead ass broke. Because my father mm-hmm. was a construction worker. He he had a real big business mm-hmm. in construction. So we was pretty, we was pretty well off. But when crack hit, you know what I'm saying, I started seeing TVs and VCRs and shit getting pawned and disappearing out of the crib. So, you know, he, he went on his, him a little stealing spree. Oh, okay. He went to stealing and breaking and shit. So, mm-hmm. you know, it wasn't long before he wound up in prison. How much time did he get? He did probably like a five piece here, got back out, you know what I'm saying? The, the monkey jumped back on his back. Shit, he did another three. You know, shit like that off and on time. You know, adding up though. You know, right. being away from, being away from his kids, and in the, in, in the meantime, the kids had to suffer and fend for themselves. Were your parents a type of well? Since your dad had left and your mom was there, and um, drugs and all of that, but was he the type of father that still took the time to try to be there for you, as in, yeah, be I mean, present somehow? Yeah, even when he was in jail, you know, he was in prison. He'll write these long ass letters and shit. Okay, you know, speaking all these. Big words that a nigga really didn't understand and shit that a nigga didn't really want to hear at that time. Mm. You know, trying to encourage me to, to go the right direction, trying to give me wise advice as to, you know, how to be a young, productive man growing up. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he always did that. But, you know, his tactics didn't always work under the circumstances. Wow. I just, um, you know, I, I cringe at the fact, you know, when I was researching you, it was... uh. A thing where I believe at 13 you caught a case for a double homicide? Yeah, yeah, at 13 okay, I so a double murder charge, yeah. Was that out of frustration because you was trying to figure it all out? No, nah, I mean, let's clear it up. I, let's I, be real. I didn't, I don't know nothing about that case. That's an that's a open case. Oh. It's still pending, you know what I'm saying? That long? I don't give a fuck a murder a murder a murder it's charge still over, for, yeah. open for life. Oh, I didn't, yeah. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> so you, know that. So yeah. you allegedly, you know, they allegedly. Yeah. So, so mm-hmm. I mean, was I mean, was this something that 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 when they went, you were going through a lot as a kid, right? Yeah, yeah. So at the end of the day, a lot of places you ended up were because of the situation that pushed you there. Yeah, I mean, you see what I'm saying? Not in a. It could be good or bad, but it's still something pushes you see, into those places. How I got fucked up in that murder, that that double murder at the age of 13 is because I was in the street, you know, doing the drug thing, selling drugs and stuff, and I was robbing like a motherfucker too at that time. And some white boys had pulled up to the hood, you know. Anytime white boys come to the hood, shit, that was a lick. So I'm like, shit. I was I was you know about to try to rob these white boys actually because I I felt like you know they had it on them and um when I got in the car with them I was bold it was it was like three of them they was in a little five point I never forget I jumped in the back seat like hell yeah what y'all want from the sir y'all so you know I had my I had my gun on me I had intentions on actually sticking their ass up robbing them but shit they was in, they I didn't know but they was they was on the same old bullshit I was on. Mm. So they was coming to get a nigga from the hood to to rob him, you know what I'm saying, for the work he had. Oh. So um they took me to a cemetery and um they beat me real bad. Wow. They you know, they beat me real bad, you know, down there unconscious. And you were by yourself? Yeah, I was by myself. You know, it was a little bit ass five point oh two seater. Mm-hmm. I mean four seater, excuse me, with two doors, you know what I'm saying? Only two doors. Cool. So I couldn't get out the motherfucker. Mm. And I was you know, I, I thought shit was a, I thought dang, you know, I thought life was a game too. Cause I was so young. Mm-hmm. I was only thirteen. I had just turned thirteen. And they pulled out a gun. I'm like, "What you gonna do? You gonna use the motherfucker?" So I'm trying to get my gun out at the same time. You know, they started brutally beating me, and you know, I'm steady trying to, you know, do whatever I'm trying to do. And I, I, I just woke up late on that night in the cemetery. They had dropped me off in the cemetery, and um, I was bloodied up and black eyes and just bust all up. So I had, you know, made it clear that. 
if I ever, you know, ran across these guys again, I was gonna get my get back. And um, it just so happened, three, four, five days later, you know, those, although I didn't have nothing to do with it, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, you can speak certain things in existence. In existence. Mm -hmm. And so I guess just by me speaking that, you know, it manifesting, these guys got found in my neighborhood on the Duncan block, like execution style murder. Wow. Like three, four days later. So Were they from your area though? Nah, they was I think they was college students or something going to one of the prestigious colleges in Macon. Dang. Um Mercer University. And um To their older kids. They was older than me. Right. Older yeah, than I was you. thirteen. They right. were probably like a nineteen, 19 20, you know, twenty college right. college age. Mm -hmm. And um they had it figured out. They was on a mission too. Mm -hmm. And um they got found like just slaughtered at the top of our block. And quite naturally, you know, everybody gonna automatically look gonna at say you. I did it, you know what I'm saying? Especially right. when I was in the streets doing the type of work I was doing anyway. They it, it, they, they felt like it it was right up my alleyway. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I I um I got up on a real deal investigation, scrutiny, and cost you know, harassed by the police, questioned, interrogated. I mean, numerous times my family was up on the surveillance, like so I had to go to jail, sit down, you know, just a lot of. A lot Being of that they came they from. was uh, not that they didn't look like us, that even made it more of a big situation. Yeah, one of right. the mothers was an actual judge. Bam! And every time I went to motherfucking court, I wouldn't give a fuck if it was for a misdemeanor, trespass, mm. like every political clout she had, she would pull and make it make my life miserable, you know. You 13, 14, 15. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, they actually, during that time, that's when I I went to YDC. Okay. They they, sent they call it, it TYC here. Yeah, youth prison. So yeah. they sent me mm -hmm. to youth prison. I had to go do a, um, a period of 18 months for some shit. They just had it trumped up on me just to get me off the street so they can buy time to, to build, a case. build a case against me. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Wow, that's so, crazy. And with you getting in trouble doing, you say you used to rob and you ended up on the streets and doing all this stuff, but then you saw your father went through what he went through and went to prison and you saw the crack era the way how it was and your parents, but you still ended up being a victim of the streets. Why? No, nah, because I didn't look at that side of things. I looked at the, the glory side of things you know I seen the drug dealers with their motherfucking dream team Jordans on with their motherfucking you know they jerseys mm -hmm. on I seen the, 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 the homies Ron Ron and they motherfucking fixed up cars tricked out cars you know dime goals in their mouth you know Rolexes this is what I saw mm -hmm. and this is what I was this is what I wanted you know the, the other parts of it yeah it was there but that, that, that ain't what I was focused on I was focused on you know, trying to get me one of the motherfucking hard ass Cadillac with the fifth wheel in the back. You know, a motherfucking a Rolex, you know, all the girls, you know what I'm saying? That's what I wanted in my life. So I didn't want to be the crackhead, you know, cooped up in a motherfucking dope house smoking rock. That mm -hmm. that wasn't what I was about. I wanted the other part of the life, the part mm -hmm. that, you know, that's glorified. The kingpin lifestyle, you know, the part that I can get my family up out of the hood. That's what I wanted. But even with that, you see the consequences a lot of time because a lot of those people you saw, they eventually went to prison, right? Mm -hmm. Or you died. You don't really, but, but but the thing about it, prison was glorified though. A How? lot of people it that, was. shit, a lot, a lot of people that go do time, even it's glorified now. And niggas respect niggas who, then, who got time on their belt. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? When, when the niggas came home from jail and prison, I saw the love they was getting. Motherfuckers was hugging them. Motherfuckers was looking up to them like, you know, their name was ringing. Like, they had clout. They had a great reputation. They had respect. And that's what and, and that's the type of shit that you really needed in order to be taken serious in the streets. But not only that, when you even got to the location of prison, people already knew you from the streets. People that already was already there, so they embrace you. Yeah, they they make you feel like you, like, dang, you here? It's a part of the like, culture. Yeah, like, they know that you was, a, and they knew you, who you was in the street. They yeah. know, like, he he ain't, they, he not nobody to play with. We glad he here, because now we more powerful. It's a part of the culture. And, do you feel like there's something wrong with that, though? I feel like it's certainly something wrong with that. You know, for people to feel like they need to go to prison to be validated. Right. You know, for people to, to feel like it's okay. It's not okay, because we know what it is. Nevertheless, 
in the streets when you're trying to gain reputation. That's just it's kind of like game banging right now. You know, you can't tell these people that you know game banging ain't cool when it's destroying it, our communities and killing and ki- we killing each other, killing you know fellow brothers around the way. But that's what they do. They game bang for strikes. They want to get reputation. They want to be known as being the most gangster game banger there is. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, it's just a part of our fucked up culture. Yeah, and yeah. I think it has a lot to do with um, being one track mind, just like how you said when you was going through what you're going through, this is the only thing you saw. Yeah. You know what I mean? Till some sometimes it takes somebody like you going to some of these kids or whoever and saying, Okay, now this is what you see. Now think of it this way. You know what I mean? But sometimes yeah. it takes even that. that they don't a lot of times being that he's older now, the young people not really just gonna listen like that. They really go by like what they see a lot. Nobody you know? don't listen to nobody. You see what I'm saying? Like when you was young, I don't give a fuck. Nobody you listening. Like, you got you gotta go through shit yourself. That's right. You see what I'm saying? But it still needs to be said because I do agree with that. But I really it's believe it's I, I do believe that you know when it's time for because so many people sit in the seat and say my mama told me this 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 is this and I didn't listen. But when it was time for them to bring it back to the recollection, yeah. it stuck and they grew up. You understand what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that's after they didn't went through it already though. Yeah, that's you know right. what I'm saying. See, when you was you know when you was young you know when, when he was young when I was young our mothers and fathers and grandparents told us a lot of things that mm-hmm. we completely disregarded but after we went through it and we got older we seen the wisdom in it and mm-hmm. so we try to spread that wisdom to our kids and grandkids but you know what they got to go through it too true so yeah some people will listen some people don't have to go through it like me for instance I never had to go through the phases of drug usage I never had to go through that. Never used it in your life. Never used it in my Me life. Me neither. Because I seen what it did to, to them. my parents. To parents. Right. Mm-hmm. I seen what it did to people that I knew was in, in great position, of great status, and it, it reduced them. It reduced giants to midgets. So when I seen that, I knew I didn't I knew I was no greater than right. those individuals that I looked up to that it completely destroyed. Did you ever go through uh you know, being in the, in the streets, uh, the liquor store man that owned the liquor store get on, and then now you coming yeah. out. Yeah, I see. Was man, he, you coming out with boxes now? Crazy. You can just get anything you want. Yeah, you can get anything. <laughs> and, and that's just how I was in the, you know, in the during the crack era. Like even crack today, I seen a lot of the homies that I, I did my thing with. Them niggas smoking rods now. Yeah, yeah. And I say just like that. Did you get on drugs, nigga? We serve. The junkies. We used to serve the smokers. How did you become a smoker? It happens. Well, they what do they it. say? They be no, like, I don't know. They don't. They, they, they don't know. I, I was fucking with this girl. The, 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 the most famous line it is is that man, I was fucking with this girl. This bitch, man, she got me on it. But we were serving the, the, the smokers. Mm-hmm. So you seeing what it did to those people. So what make you think you are exempt from the power of that that demon? Yeah, and and to be you know re- be real with you, like not only did it, I mean, if you come up in that era, you see the the cooking it, you know exactly how all this stuff is yeah. going down. And for you to try it when you know what it's doing to people is crazy. It's I agree crazy. with you one hundred percent. Like agree. my mom, right? I never forget when I was a kid, she used to take me to school, and she had this little dusty ass car. I forgot the name of the car, but it was brown. When no escort was it? One of them escorts so she yeah, uh, yeah, 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 probably some shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So she she used to drive in this little car and on the way to school she used to smoke cigarettes called Benjamin Benjamin Hedges. Okay, Benjamin yeah, yeah, Hedges yeah, yeah, yeah. The green pack. Green pack, for sure. Yeah. And so she used to have the windows rolled up. And the smoke was so stinking. I used to hate that shit. <laughs> and I used to let down the one. And she was like, why ain't you let my, my damn one? I'm like, well, I can't stand it. She's like, yeah, you saying that now, but when you get older, I bet you be smoking cigarettes. Wow. So from that moment, I made a, a, a vow to myself that I never smoke a cigarette. And you know what I'm saying? I'm 30 something years old and I never smoked a cigarette That's a day in my life. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta push it into the music because we got time. Yeah. Uh, I like, like, you get you, you. I know you. You you met Kinky first or whatever, right? Or, or, or did you meet? You didn't meet Jeezy first. You met Kinky first. Nah, Kinky from my block. So he from your block. So how did the music thing start? Like like explain to me. So I summed that up, but I don't want to really dwell on it. Okay. But um, so as I told you, I had to go to YDC U prison for sure. So in the hood, I, you know, I was always a rapper. I was always you know 
fuck around with the crisscross shit back then. Yeah, yeah. So when I, so when I did go to you prison, I got out. Kink came to me and said, you know what I'm saying? He got a friend named Lil J you know, that want to meet me, you know, because he heard a lot about me being in the streets. And, you know what I'm saying? They they basically looked up to me as a youngster because they older than me. And so um, when I um when I met Jay, he you know, he he wanted to hear me rap because he had a partner. When I met Jeezy, he wanted to hear me rap because he had some cousins in Atlanta that that was into the music industry. And so, you know, he didn't want to be, Jeezy didn't want to be no rapper, no shit like that. But he wanted to, you know, be on the business side of things with his cousin him because, you know, his, that's what his cousin was doing. So, boom, you know, when I met Jeezy, you know, we we we, we, we kicked it off. And I, um, you know, spitting little raps around the hood and we linked up with, with two of his cousins from Atlanta, said Black and G Money, and we did the first record. Um, then I, I linked up with them and I did the first record that I had ever done. And that's how everything got started. Mm. And after, afterwards, you know, we, we formed this label called Young Gun Entertainment. Okay, y'all young. It was what, very What young. the hell is Young Gun? Like when y'all, what, you say you formed it, it's like you guys didn't, you didn't do paperwork. Yeah, they did paperwork. Y'all did paperwork? You gotta understand that G, that Jeezy and, and How much Kink, old is he of you? Jeezy like six, seven, about six or seven years old. Okay, me. I get it. So Jeezy and Kink, like I told you, Jeezy was following the formula of his cousins from mm -hmm. Atlanta who was already in the yeah, music industry. Okay. So they gave him the game. Mm -hmm. And then him and Kink had went back in 97, 98, him and Kink had went back down to um, Fort Lauderdale with fucking with Jeffrey Eubanks and Nemo. And um, they gave them even more game. So when they came back to Macon, it was like, you know what I'm saying, Lil Mill, cause that's what they called me in the streets, Mill. My name is Amir, so they called me Lil Mill. They was like, Mill, man, we finna um get this record label. We finna start Younger Entertainment, and we want you, you know what I'm saying, to be the rapper. We, we need you to do your thing, man, because you hard as fuck. You got the streets, you got the charisma, you got everything we need, you know what I'm saying? We gonna be CEOs, and we you know, we, we just want you to just do your thing. So that's how everything got started. Wow, and, and so when everything gets started, um, you end up catching a case of some sort. Yeah, I was catching cases the whole while. The whole so, while. Yeah. yeah, because of that judge that kept antagonizing you. Yeah, and I, I wasn't making it no better either because, shit, I was steady doing the In same the stupid Because <laughs> <shit. laughs> we ain't going to learn until we bump yeah, our head. Yeah, We're going to get to where we going. When did the name Go Mouth come about? It's, it's funny, but... um. So, in the streets, I had goals everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Goals mm -hmm. all in my mouth and shit. And, um, so, you know, I think we had did a song called, um, what the fuck was that in the song? It was a song like, hey, yeah, Rod Dog, nigga, I flip brick. And just say, say, nigga, we both this shit. Can't keep yeah, so we had did a song, and, and um, G was like, I wrote with young nigga that flip bricks and Rod D. I ain't bullshitting they real match they go T. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? That, that was way back then. And so, you know, every now and then they, you know, they, they'll call me gold mouth. But when I went to prison, that's when everybody, like, really just, like, keyed in to the gold mouth shit. Like, everybody just really just went crazy. To every, you know, that one gold mouth, beca I became more like a a legend, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, Memphis type yeah. shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, when I got out of prison, you know, I ain't had no goals in my mouth. But I gotta, you, you got to go back to this right here. Oh, okay. You you get ready. You go to prison. Or you get locked up. I'm trying to get to the point of how far along were you when you, like, had the deal that you guys had signed and everything. No, we had went real far. Y'all went far? Yeah, we, we dropped, like, three albums. I got, like, the first record that we actually did. What's I wrong? got. No. The first record is that it, we is did. Is it too nice? I know get on top of your nerves. No, I ain't tripping. Yeah, the, the first the first record that we did, it um, I got a habit with that shit too. I don't even know what the I fuck do I got too. Do. I hate it. Me, I do yeah, too. The, the mic, it's because the mic's gonna pick it up. But go yeah. ahead. Yeah. So um, the first record that we actually, I mean, what what was I saying? So yeah, you said y'all did three that we albums did, or three? Yeah, we did three albums. Mm -hmm. So we. I did, didn't. I, I. What was they? I did they hit? Yeah, I got them. They, they was underground though. Okay, of course. Yeah. What's the name so, of them? One of them called. Blame it on a yay. Mm -hmm. Another one called Hell in the ATL. You was doing all the, all the rapping yourself. Nobody else. Yeah, well, I had brought two of my homeboys along. Okay. You know, Kojak and Kid. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to them. They, you know, they still they still in the mad town doing their thing or whatever. Okay. Um, 
So then we did another one called Off the Chain. And through, throughout the process, I was, when we was doing the music shit, I had caught some old, some old fucked up cases, murder ca- charges and stuff. Yeah. And I was fighting cases and Kink and, and Jeezy, they, they felt like I wasn't taking the music thing Serious. seriously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Cool. They had invested so much money and I wasn't um, necessarily like just being who they wanted me to be. You know, as far as like just a rapper, yeah, you didn't want to give it a hundred percent. No, you yeah, don't yeah. let that street really? life. You don't want to leave the street Not, life. I would never say I, I. I never wanted to be in the street. You know what I'm saying? It's just I, who you were. I was forced to be in the street. Yeah, I feel you know. But then when you saw the opportunity to be, you know, get the, it in the music, the music wasn't it's paying like my bills. Fifteen? How old are you? Seventeen? Yeah, seventeen, eighteen, shit like that. So you don't, it wasn't it don't paying register. my bills. So it's easy to say get in the studio and just record record music and be a rapper. But when first of the month come on, or come around, you, you know, you gotta pay your bills pay and bills. shit. So how, how you gonna get the money into, in the meantime? You know what I'm saying? And working and stuff like that, and you know, in, coming from where I come from, niggas ain't getting no motherfucking job. Who the fuck wanna get paid? You know, five, five, five dollars, $15, fifteen, five, fifteen. You're exactly an hour. right, like, bro. We ain't doing that, you know. And, and we and we know we can get it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? You, and I, I know I can get me a motherfucking quarter ounce of crack, break this bitch down, get me six hundred, six hundred dollars big ass rocks and and post up and flip that and come up on me a motherfucking half hey, breaking no time. You know, yeah, yeah then next you time on you on a hole. Now you on a hole. Now you know what I'm saying? You breaking a hole. Now you, you gotta you get that quarter you get, key. He feeling you get good. Two thousand in the pocket. <laughs> and you come up on four in the baby. Oh you know? yeah, that's the beat. And then you get on nine zip before you know you're on a brick there you and go in the hood a brick is, is is a hustler's dream that's mm-hmm. what it was to come up on a key a, a brick kilo. is a hustler yeah cause what? you know and, and, and we gonna get into it a how little bit how much money is a brick well it, it, you know my, my 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 the guy who I the greatest rapper uh, musician of all time Pimp C said they wasn't getting them for 17 down there but it was some people saying 17 on these records and uh, so you know <laughs> So that I mean, but shout in out, Texas, shout out to Pimp. I love, I love the dog. R.I.P. the Pimp. R.I.P. Man, I love he, Pimp. He, man. he was wrong with that. Oh wait a minute! No, no, no! You're not gonna come in here. Let me tell you something. You're not gonna come in here. Don't you ever in your life? Don't you ever in your life? Don't you ever in your life? I don't understand. I want to hear the numbers. The numbers that they was quoting on record at that time. You know, you was gone. Yeah, the numbers they was quoting on them records at that time. It was unheard of. It was too high. No, no, it was too, it was low. too low. low. And, and we think. in Texas, y'all down in Atlanta. And you I was around though, in. But you got to think, though. When when the BMF era came, like those Mexicans, that was the, Atlanta is a drug hub. Mm-hmm. And they was getting that work over there to Atlanta. Like the cartel was coming. Like they was bypassing Texas. These particular cartels, really? they was going straight no, to no, that. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. They, they, the ones you talking border. about. Yeah, the ones I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, because we got. Oh, no, no, no. Y'all, y'all no, we y'all, getting everything. Texas, y'all, 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 y'all,
the prices were that number. That's how much he was giving them to his people for. Oh, that's all it. That's all it is. So that's I don't. True. So if, if you wasn't out here, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna be real but with I, you. But I get you. I'm gonna be real with you. I'm not me personally. I'm not gonna speak on. Yeah, because you don't know that I, that that I don't know for, for sure. Right, exactly. Because like I say, I wasn't there. That's all. I never had a brick for seventeen five. There you go. However, nowadays they even cheaper. You <laughs> <laughs> today, today, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't deal in, I don't deal in drugs or anything of that, of that nature. You know, nowadays. However, I got a car the other day. Somebody talking about, man, these motherfuckers. Stop, man. Yeah, I said, no, what? man. Say, Let never, it go, man. I, say, I never heard prices like nah, that. No, because you know what, man? It's I, different. I probably stepped on. This ain't like it used to be, bro. This day and age, you were gone. So prices going down. The prices, no, the price ain't going. The, the quality definitely going listen, down. And during COVID, the prices were fifty two, seventy, and some prices. I mean, some places, motherfucking sixty bands. You know what I'm saying? The call I got the other day, I got to put my shades. <laughs> <laughs> Say it's going down, right? But yeah. that's the devil. That's the devil. They're trying to get trying you to, temptation. Trying to, influence, they're trying to get me back. We're not going. And I ain't going. No, we're you not going. Because, because life too is too time. good, man. We're life not doing too, that no listen, more. And you know what I'm saying? Like, to be honest with you, it's too many hustles. I mean, there's too many opportunities out yeah. here. Legal hustles. To, legal hustles. They're giving it away. Legal, legal boss, lady. hustles. It's too many legal hustles out here, you know what I'm saying, for a nigga. To be going back selling crack and coke and right. shit like that. Yeah, and, and I mean, I'm sure it's good money in it. I would know. I would who's it. smoking people, crack? People say that's what? not in style. That's no a more. bunch of them. You break down that's a kilo in, right now, nigga. That shit gonna be. The nigga, only thing you hear me. about right now is Damn. fentanyl. Fentanyl is what everybody be talking about right yeah, now. Yeah, fentanyl she killing people. Man. Fentanyl has take, taken over for the younger generation. But you got the eighty babies and the seventy babies. They still like smoking crack. They want rocks in their system, man. They want to smoke a rock. Well, let me pull you back can in. People, can I, people, I pull can back people, in. can people actually recover from that stuff and not want it no more? Oh, you had you had some people that stopped. Uh, it, there's been cases, it's but very, not, hard, very, though. very few. But it's been cases. It's very hard. But for it's been a cases, not to relapse, man. Like crack. it's been cases. I know some niggas. No, they never go back. I seen some niggas that was smoking rocks and became kingpin. They never went back. That's right. But I'm saying it's very, very hard. Thin, yeah. When you get that, that that monkey on your back, when you when you go to you know, spearmen with that cocaine and that crack, it's hard to get off that shit. Bro. Okay, let me, let me, I'm gonna pull you out of there, cause boy, I can talk about that all day. Me That's why I be sitting right me there too. on it. You me know. Too. But but <laughs> but too. I want to ask you like like after you 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 get locked up, what's the first song that hit for Jeezy that you heard that, that you you heard? That you was like, damn, they own. You know what I'm saying? Like, what was that first song? Okay, this, this is what I do, right? Because I got nothing res but respect for for, for you and, and Bars Lady. For sure. I, I don't want to really talk much about the homie because I, you know, I got nothing but love for him. Yeah. I want to focus more on on you, on yeah. me, because you know he didn't did his thing. He didn't made his legacy. Correct. For sure. That's time for, sure. for me to, to do to yours. Let people know who I am, my story, and so you know I can create my own legacy. No, no, you already doing. You know that. what I'm saying? Um. But yeah, so yeah, the first song that I heard that 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 the homie had dropped was, um, "We Getting Money Over Here." Okay, okay. What a dude pimping, you know what I'm saying? When I heard that, that song on the radio, Shawty Red, was Shawty Red rocking? It was him and Bum B. It was him and Bum B. That's yeah, my boy yeah, right there. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, shout out to Bum B. Bum yeah. B, a real one, man. A real one, yeah. So that's the first record that I heard that he had on the radio, and I was in in the penitentiary in Florida, and I knew, you know, it had it had a different. Dimension to it because I'm listening to this shit. I'm in Pensacola, Florida. I'm in Santa Rosa State Penitentiary. You know what I'm saying? On CM. So me being that I heard it away from Georgia, I knew you know this shit had to have some type of rain to big. it, and it made me very excited for him. And um, I was very very enthused. I was inspired by hearing that, and it made me feel like the 35 years I had caught in the penitentiary wow. wasn't so bad. But 35 years, man, how do you come to grips? Like you didn't. You at the law library, you trying yeah, to figure working, this out. You working. ain't playing no games. Yeah, yeah. You you every day you get up, you you trying yeah. to figure something out. Yeah, even to this day, a lot of people don't even know that I'm I'm actually a registered paralegal. I can go work for I any know. Yeah. law firm in America. Like I I'm, I've been certified. I'm a registered paralegal when it comes to business corporate corporate law. 
um, criminal law, civil law, you know what I'm saying, family law. Like I am, I'm registered in those areas, and I, I, I understand the Constitution. I, I know, I know the, the Bill of Rights from the top of my head. Like, like you, you know, what I'm saying, quoting one of the Pimp C song. You know what I'm saying? So I had to learn those things when I was in the penitentiary in order to get myself out of prison. I had to, you know, learn how to shepherdize cases, learn how to litigate, learn how to, you know, compile motions and, and you know, just litigate, you know, to get out of prison. I helped a lot of people get these cases reduced. I was in a law library. What was the craziest case that you helped to reduce? It's a lot of crazy cases. You got to give it to me. It's one. Just that give me one. Out. I think one of the craziest cases that I helped a brother beat was he killed his mama. Wow. Yeah. And he murdered his mama. He stabbed her like seventeen to twenty-one times. How old was he when wow. he did this? He was of age. He was probably like a twenty, twenty-one. And he murdered his mama. So you helped him beat the case. Yeah, I, I helped him. Get, get back some of his time. They had gave him 65 years, and he he went back to court after I litigated his 20, 2254, which is a federal habeas corpus. He, um, federal courts granted his, his motion, reversed and remanded, modified his sentence to 30 years. Wow. And and, 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 and this is coming from a guy who only had a sixth grade education like Nito. Mm -hmm. uncle, shout out to Nito, man, who left school. Grandpa told him, don't go back. Um, but yeah, like, like, for you to make those strides, you'd have never seen that coming. Cause probably, I'm gonna be honest with you, for me, you know, once you got in those situations, you started to, you know, study and read and you found out it was more to you than what you probably Yeah, because you know, when I went to prison, you see people, what I'm saying? People was like, go mouth, you gotta find a loophole. Yeah. And I, I didn't know what the fuck a loophole was. They like a gray area in the law where, you know, mm -hmm. they, they, they committed an error at your trial and you can get your case reversed or overturned. So I, I, I linked up with an old dude, you know, on my first day in prison. He was like, man, jit, don't be like the rest of these jits around here, you know, on the basketball court chasing these wham wham and zoom zoom. Yeah. You know, you better get your, you you want to get that 35 year sentence off, you better get your ass in that law library and start studying. So I used to see him, he had all the law books stacked in his motherfucking cell, like all these case, case law that he had been reading and studying. He like, the first thing you need to do, you need to learn that damn constitution. Mm -hmm. You know, the federal constitution. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, yeah? So he put it in before me, slapped it on the table. This is the goddamn constitution. This is your rights right here. Learn the Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments to the United States Constitution. I, I, so I started studying the rights, you know, learning to recite them in my head. and Just learning. before even the education, it's just straight yeah, off the bat. Straight, straight you that's know, that's your survival that's instincts that's kick in. That's right. You know, I liked it to live a good life. Before I went to prison, I was living good. I was rich. So I wanted to get back to that lifestyle. And I didn't have the paper because my brother had ran off with all the money that I had. Relocated, moved to New York, left me fucked up in, Flo in Flo state of Florida without a lawyer. So I had to fend for myself. So I started studying, you know, the law. I got a Black Laws dic Dictionary so I could understand the, the lingo, the language of the law. And that's what I did. You know, I studied the law. I studied the words, the diction. I, I studied um, etiology, it 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 which is, you know, the study of words. And I had to, you know, apply myself like like I was a motherfucking uh, college law student, and, and that shit worked. Wow! Can a um, ex convict become a lawyer? You you can't become a, a lawyer that practices in court, but you can be a paralegal, which is the people. I know what a paralegal. Yeah, yeah, that prepare the, the the documents for the lawyer. Mm -hmm. I couldn't actually go to a courtroom and be a lawyer, right. and litigate. I mean, argue a case. You know, unless it was a pro se, unless I was doing it pro bono, you know, on my own, mm -hmm. but I can't fight. Also, for a pro bono, else. you could still go there. You know and how, do yeah, it? you know how you you're not represented by an attorney, right? But you walk up in that motherfucker and you know say, "Yo, I'm representing myself. Mm -hmm. My name is such and such, and you know this is the case before me. You know whatever right, going right, so you right, represent right. yourself." Wow, you um the the thing I, I really that sticks out to me about you is the fact that you made a million dollars while you was locked up. Yeah, yeah. Facts, I, I want to break that down, you know, and I know you, you know, you wrote the books. Yeah. I want to talk about the books. You know what I mean? These are great accomplishments to even understand. I want to understand how you even understood how to, you know, create, whether you self-publish, how you, how you done it. Yeah. You know, I, you know, me, I, mine was different. You know, we getting uh, uh, envelopes, uh, all type of stuff trying to come up with. 
with, with, with stores, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sell some tattoo ink. It was a little different, you know what I'm saying? Yours, you came up with a strategy that was big, that was mega, to make that kind of money, to be able to uh, take care of yourself during that time. I think that's noble as hell. So just break it down to me how you was able to uh, come up with the financial, you know. Well, how everything came about, um, I was doing, doing seven years on, on 24-hour lockdown at Florida State Penitentiary. Okay. And at the time, I was still sitting on 35 years. I had then basically, you know, goofed up my life. And I wanted to still do something because I've always been inspired. I, I was always motivated and determined to, to do something with myself in my life. And I, I had no other way of reaching the people. And you so said I, seven years on lockdown. You mean that you had to stay in your cell yeah, the seven, whole time for seven yeah, years? Yeah, seven years. I, I didn't come out that cell until after seven years. And the sun... Mm. The, the sunshine looked at it felt like paradise you know when it when the sun touched my skin it felt surreal and that's how it is when you at Florida State Penitentiary on maximum lockdown um so it was a a very unique experience um that's all I can say and even to this day I don't even know how I, um I was able to survive that like mentally but I do know because I understand the steps and measures that I took throughout the process however you know back in my motherfucking mansion now uh, or whatever I'm like ah damn you know niggas living like that like whoa <laughs> let me make sure you know what I'm saying it's unbelievable yeah I, so I get calls from my niggas in the pen and I'm like um they like man you, you, they send me pictures and shit they be like bro you remember this I'm like oh yeah I remember that shit and you know niggas still living like that so I yeah. have to keep that in mind and that's like my motivation so I do a lot of things that I do I do for my homies that, that I left behind the walls that I know would never see daylight brothers that I know you know rooting for me that, that genuinely want to see me win that I inspire that I, that I motivate due to my story due to my situation my circumstances and so you know that's one of my main motivations how, you were saying how you, that book. yeah you were saying how you made the million while you were there so what I did um, I wrote the book I, I was like man you know er, cause everybody in prison you know used to ask me about Jeezy yeah of course he was a, a real big deal at the time and you know, I got tired of answering questions about that shit. <laughs> That's why you keep saying that in here. Uh, you like, I'm tired of it. Yeah, so everybody wanted to ask me about it. But him. it's a part of your journey, though. Yeah, but goddamn. Um. <laughs> 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 now, wait a minute. I want to ask you what. Is, is it this? You you've been doing a lot of uh, uh, press over there. How long you been out now? Like almost three years. Three years, and you to answer Jeezy questions until you can't answer no damn mo. Yeah, and, and I'm tired of that shit, man. You know what I'm saying? It, I love it. I'm tired of it. No, you know let's what I'm be saying? real. Let's be real on Blog like, Talk 101. Like, you know. What is the worst thing about it? It ain't me. You like, it's that a, ain't it's mine. A, it's a part of, yeah, of course, it's a part of, you know, my origin, what, what, what how I get in the industry. And, and every day, I, I appreciate the homie for taking the initiative to, to being the person that he is today because it opened up a lot of doors for me. You see what I'm saying? Just by, you know, him making it. Whether it was intentionally or unintentionally or intentionally on it. his behalf. Yeah. It still opened up a lot of doors for me. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, it gave me opportunity. So I'm <laughs> grateful for that. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the homie. <laughs> Nevertheless, I'm tired of answering questions about that nigga. But I'm asking you no know, motherfucking <laughs> <Jesus> questions. <laughs> <laughs> Say these niggas, but man, you gotta understand, you was locked up. And you don't know how big that movement was, bro. It was know crazy, it. man. You I know, know you wasn't here to I see it, and it really it. makes it more weirder. You like, what the hell, man? Yeah, Cause you know when I got <laughs> all this shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's still kind of new to me, but you know, cause let's not talk about Jeezy. Jeezy, <laughs> no, nah, yeah, but it was new to me. Of course. And so even to this day, a lot of stuff is still new to me. You see what I'm saying? So. You know, me knowing a person that slept in my house, a person that, you know, I let, he I used to let him wear my jewelry. You know, a person that I really protected in the streets. If he had issue, you know, they came to me for the issues because I'm the, I'm, the, I, I was the, I'm the street nigga. I know. They, they're not the street niggas. I know You know that. what I'm saying? They did their hustle thing, but they they not the street niggas. So when they had smoke, when they had, you know, when he wanted to go get my earrings or rock my Rolexes and shit, he come to me. And so, 
you know, a pr- to see the person that was a non rapper that became a fucking rap icon, like it, it, it stills a part. I'm, I'm mind boggled by that shit. You know what I'm saying? I so know you are. It ain't just like really just you know just sat in with me because. And, and through looking at that example, I know that this shit is is reachable. Yeah, it can happen yeah. for me. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It can happen for anybody. Correct. Because I got records right now in my phone, old ass records that we did, and you'll be like, "Who the fuck is that?" It ain't, it wouldn't be the individual that you know as a mm. trap as a trap icon, trap trap rap icon. So you know that type of shit is motivation. It let it let me know that you know this shit can be done. You know. Anything that you really put your mind to, mm-hmm. anything that you're determined to do, you can actually do that shit. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Okay, but the thing is, you you don't understand what you just said. Really, I'm a thinker, right? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. you know, we hustle. So, in my mind, you can't sit here and tell me you got a, a work, you know, music with you and him on it, all kind of stuff. No, wait a minute. I'm not saying I'm not doubting you. I'm just saying and not have it in your heart to say, you know what? I'm gonna do me a whole movie or a series or something. You got the elements to do things that other people wouldn't have. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got, that, that's money in the bank, to be honest with you, bro. This record right here is called um, Players from the South. You gonna send that to me? Yeah, I'm gonna send it to you. Yeah, because I got to have it because I and, and it's just for boss talk. Cause I'm, I'm gonna play that hoe. Let me hear it. This song right here, right? This the first song we ever done. It was in '97. Already, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Uh. And so, you know, we- I want to hear his voice in this time. Let me hear this, Let man. Me Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Oh, this is him right here. That damn show him. Yeah. That damn show him. Yeah, that's him. You got it. Go do okay. That damn show him. Yeah, you want no yeah on that one? What? Nah, nah. Yeah. You know yeah, so. No, I love it, man. I, I love your honesty, bro. Uh, Kinka ain't, ain't no, nobody ain't working. I think everybody just not grew each other, bro. Y'all done. It's something different now. You know what I'm saying? I don't really think that's the case. A lot of people nobody say shit. Nobody's doing a reunion, man. Like you know hot I mean? boys. No, I don't think. I don't think like it's the outgrowing. I think more so. You you can look at it from that perspective, but I think you know people change up on you, man. And it don't be the outgrowing shit. People change up. The money and the fame has a strange way of changing people, man. If you look at a lot of the, the, the most successful people, they got issues. They got issues with their people. Like that's why I respect. I respect people like Jay Z, people hey, like Ti. You know because these people still got their original people around them. So you can't tell me that. You know, when you get into the money and you get into the different world of things, you can't keep your people right there with you. Same mm-hmm. thing with same thing with Birdman. Birdman, they, yeah. it may look raggly, but it's but still they still, there. Look at Birdman. BG got out of jail. Although you know people they can argue that they got to be some 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 business going on, but the fact of the matter is that these people still fucking with their people. Look how many times Birdman juvenile didn't cuss Birdman out. BG didn't diss Birdman. Birdman still, said something, but right you know what? They still they family. Still a family. Yeah. At the end of out, Birdman just loved Juvie Tuesday. We was at Juvie Tuesday one time. These people still. Fuck with they people. That's real. So anybody that's solid, look at Jay Z. Tata still around. Emery's fresh out of prison. He yeah. fresh on a private jet. This nigga a billionaire. This nigga still fucking with all his people. Sean Don, that, that girl. Sean. All these people around. This man is still there. So I feel like Ti. Look at him. P.S. The whole c- country came. Matt Boney. All these he people that you him. rock with. You, uh, no matter how bad of a fuck up these people are, these people still connected to their people. That's real. So if it's anybody in the industry that that you see that ain't connected to their people, you know, it's a question there. It's a it's big question there. A question there, man. Yeah, that's true. And it, but then I was, I was, I was really because the part that I was um, just saw the other day because I like to see couples when that they do good. I'm always rooting for couples, especially celebrity couples, because I know how much um, stress they go under, especially once they become a union. You know what I mean? Because of TV and people at them and all of that. And to hear that they're now getting a divorce. Oh, 
That's a part of somebody, life. Somebody, yeah. somebody, somebody, the Jeezy situation? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, what, what are you saying? What are you asking? No, because he and his wife are getting a divorce, it says. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, shit. That's, my, that's too fresh. You probably don't even know that. Oh, nothing. yeah. I think somebody somebody sent me that. Shit, my nigga. Yeah, got, I just saw it. Shit, my I, nigga got tired of eating sushi. <laughs> 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 no, so let's get back to you, shit. man. Like, like, so the million dollar move, man, like, for you to make that a success. So it's it, to do it. Is one thing, but to make it a success is a whole nother. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In the situation you was in, it may seem so, like just something that that you basically done, and it seemed doable. But a lot of people in that wrote books that didn't do nothing. Well, you know, I, I look at everything as a hustle. Me too. I came from the streets, man, so I feel like I can sell anything. Me so too. if you give me a million motherfucking books. I'm finna treat these bitches like like when I was on the corner selling rock. I'm mm. finna sell every last one of these books. So that that's the whole mentality and approach I had when I wrote my book. I said, shit, if I can sell a hundred thousand books at ten th- at ten dollars a pop, you do the numbers. So that was my approach. I'm like, shit, anybody I'm with, nigga, we need to be pumping these books. books. You know what I'm saying? So when I wrote the book, that's what I was on. I was like, mm. shit, we need to have events. We need to have all kind of venues related to this Light Before Rap book because this bitch need to be sold. I need to say, I already know what it's going to take for me to sell a motherfucker, you know, make a million dollars out of this bitch. Give me 100,000 book. I'm selling these bitches at $10, $15, sometimes $20 a pop. If a nigga got $8, fuck, give me $8. You know, I'm a hustler. Let's get it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that, that, that's the whole approach I had when I wrote, when I wrote my book. And, um, you What's know, the name of your book? It's called Life Before Rap. The um a glimpse behind Young Jeezy's rise to stardom. Mm-hmm. So you know, because I wanted to tell the story that a lot of people don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of you know people hear about certain things on rap records and so on and so forth. But I wanted to tell the backstory as to how all of these things got started and how pivotal it was, how instrumental it was when we was trying to make the transition from the streets to corporate America. And in that book. Um, what was the thing that because I know your fans going to reach out to you about certain parts what is that part that everybody keep coming to you about in the book well um, the part in the book that I think I stated you know me and me and, me and the homie had a falling out mm-hmm. and it was related to the street stuff mm-hmm. you know at one point you know we used to do dealings and stuff and when I used to take the stuff home and weigh it up, it was all it would always off. be off. Mm-hmm. Forty grams here, you know, thirty eight grams there, you know. And one after nine or ten times, I had brought that you know to the homie attention. Mm-hmm. After nine or ten times, I finally brought it to the homie attention, and they added up to then a half a a half a thing. So next time. For you to pay mm-hmm. I love it man You don't even know and I love this <laughs> I don't want to hear no um, Excuses Yeah Cause I ain't nothing wrong With my scale He said he didn't do I it I didn't got three different scales He said he didn't do it You nah, miscounted Nah he was like Alright cool Oh really and, and, and I ain't like that Damn right you didn't like wow. Because now you made me feel like Okay the whole time You knew What the what exactly. was going on You trying to play Yeah And we don't play And you so, know we don't play So what did you do so you know, I, I had a um, I had a remedy for that. And, okay. Um, I said to myself, okay, you know, he said he was going to straighten it. You know, on this time or every time he come through, he was going to add an extra one or two, and so on and so forth. And that's how we'll correct it. Payment plan. But the, yeah, but the, the second, third time I came around, and you know, he never straightened it. So I said, on the fourth time, it ain't going to be no fourth time. They're going to take everything you got. Mm-hmm. And um, and that's how I'm rocking. And so that's what happened. And so, you know, we kind of went all different ways and so on and so forth. But, you know, overall... Um, that was the last time? I mean, the last time we actually, like, really did business, did, like did that. business in the, you know, the street way. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but y'all still were cool. Yeah, yeah, we were cool. Mm-hmm. How the hell was y- you just eating knew not to come at you about none of that? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, just everybody know what it is. Um, it, it was a matter of... When we, it, ain't, it ain't about that. You know, everybody's, a, you know, stand-up per- people. It's just that when you know you wrong... Like, you know, when you're wrong, you're wrong. Yeah, but I got to say this now. If that was happening then, you could see how this is happening now. Stop playing. 
<laughs> I'm playing. Like, this is, this is real is real. But let's move on to something else, man. Uh, I just want the next book you wrote. Cause was that locked up or were you out? You was locked up. I was locked up. When I wrote down too. You killing the game. How much did you make on that book? It's crazy because I wrote the verses before. What? It was even ever done. Like I predicted this whole thing. The book that I got is called First Verse. You know, the Jeezy and Gucci beef. That's crazy. I had already wrote the whole thing. I got to ask you something. Were you out when Jeezy, they did that? So I see or no? I was locked up. You were locked up? I was locked up during all that shit, man. So you ain't know nothing about none of that? Nah, I'm, a, nah, I'm from Macon, Georgia. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of the, I, I only know about the Macon, Georgia, Georgia shit. Stuff. You see what That's saying? real. I don't, I, I wasn't in Atlanta with, 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 with people. I just know the, the, the authentic making shit. You but know when you wrote on it, how did you write on it? How did you Cause my niggas, it? Because a lot of my niggas, they it's been you, there sir. since day one and with, you know, through everything. Like, a lot of my homies, like, up until, like, a couple of years ago, they was, a lot of them was there. You so you wrote from a third-hand perspective. Yeah, I wrote it from um, a lot of information that I got from, right. you know, some key people that actually, you know, went on the mission even when, you know, Whatever. So and and so as you develop the book, w what are some of the reviews you got back after you done this book? And like, did anybody ever say something that threw you off? Like, what the hell? How did he I mean, I can't be questioned, man. My credibility is impeccable. When it comes to the street, I can't be questioned. How the fuck nigga gonna, gonna gonna question me or ask me anything? About these yeah. niggas ain't walked in my footsteps. These niggas ain't they ain't seen the shit I done seen. That's real. You know what I'm saying? These niggas ain't went through the shit I went through. These niggas. These niggas out here be on the internet. They be talking and talking all this old crazy shit. You know the internet. You can in, in, anybody can be entertained on the internet. That's real. But in real life, like them niggas don't. Them niggas know what it is. That's them niggas real. can't question me. And I think I'm gonna tell you something. Like you know the ones who I've interviewed a lot of people, bro. I interview a lot, and um, I always tell you I know the ones. Actually, you know what Blair Raw did my um my introduction. He did in one of my books. Yeah, Blair Raw. And it's called, crazy because I never. You know, met the homie you on the streets. I never had no relations wow. with him on the streets. You know what I'm saying? I just heard that he was a, a pretty decent and thorough brother. You know what I'm saying? You've been through a lot too. I mm -hmm. never, I never fuck with him on the streets. You know what I'm saying? So but, how did um, he ended up doing that? Because I, I, because my nigga Kink, he fucked with him real heavy. When I was mm -hmm. in prison, I reached out to him, and we connected. And, um, he just did. Okay, it for me. that's, that's hard, man. Like the thing I, I well, I, actually, he charged me some money to do it. So you but really still, business, right. huh? it's business. Yeah, everything is business with with, with, with with these people out here for the most part. You know what I'm saying? Um, people say they fuck with you, or people, you know, some people do things gen genuinely from you know the heart. Yeah. But out here in this industry, it's a cutthroat industry. This shit worse than a dope game. These niggas will smile with you and kick it with you and spend the night at your house mm -hmm. and y'all go hang out. But then as soon as you ask for a verse, they gonna see your motherfucking invoice. But what I realize about this business is that Man. sometimes, but sometimes even the, the real ones, what they'll do, they'll charge you up front for the first one just to see where your head's at. But after that, they'll do it for the solid. No, but no, it ain't. I'm being Sometimes, because if you know, they didn't have can, a relationship with you. Things can happen in any way. Kind of like the Dolphin, you know, Gucci situation. I think from, from what I hear, Dolphin originally paid Gucci. And then, you know, from that point on, Gucci just wanted to rock with the homie, and so mm -hmm. they did things. But even even in those situations, shit, you know, if, you, if they sign to a label, the label might send you an invoice. You see what I'm saying? Right. But it's just a cutthroat-ass industry. And I was I was listening to something the other day. It's really fucked up. Like, black, 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 our culture is really fucked up because a lot of people feel like your success means my failure. That's bad. Like, if you succeed, I can't succeed. Or it's going to make me look bad. But what they don't understand is that if you succeed, I can succeed too. That's real. It's not, if you succeed, we, we can all shine. It's enough money in the world for everybody. It's enough success in the world for everybody. So why not, you know, help one another? A lot of people feel like, damn, I can't, I don't want him to get on. I don't want to see him on because, shit, he going to stop me. He going to stop what I got. Nah, man. Everybody can everybody can succeed in the same motherfucking in the same arena. Everybody can be happy. We live in a very judgmental society. We live, yeah, we live in a real fucked up society, <laughs> Dude, man. You know so, what I'm saying? No, I, I, one question I wanted to yeah. how how much time did you actually spend Seven, in? Oh, you know, I yeah, know, I've been I've been researching. Prison. 
Because I, I know you have 17, 17, 17 years, years. 17, 8 months. 8 months. 17, 8 months. 17, 17, 8 months. 8 months. I didn't get the 8 month point. Yeah, yeah, okay. 17, 17 years, 8 months. Yeah. Um, when, when you looked at coming home, I, I, I seen where you had gotten stabbed in the back and you went through some stuff. Because that niggas do be like trying to figure out ways to, the devil, I still blame the devil, and I'm a spiritual dude. I, yeah, the yeah. devil be looking for ways to try to trap you, keep you in the situation, for you to even get out and spin out the way you did, you know what I mean, to come home. That was something. When I heard your story, I was like, man, that's, I can relate, bro. I can relate. You know what I'm saying? Like, so how, how. How, how was it? How intense was it? Just give me a little bit of spill on it. Just well, coming home. about that situation? Yeah, just I mean, to no, coming home. Just the coming home part for us, that challenging the fact of you maybe not even getting to come home. How mentally did that, you know, kind of mess with you? Because I know it would have. I was, I had lacked the confidence in myself in a lot of areas because, you know, you get out and people are like, you can't do this. Man, you might as well go get a job. You know, you too old to do this, to do that, or the other. And you hear those things. And a lot of those things kind of grow on you. And you begin to believe in those things. And so I had to, you know, I, I had to, like, re, re, redefine myself. I had to re-event myself. Mm -hmm. I had to go through a complete reevaluation process. You know, because I wasn't going to fuck with music no more. Mm. But now I'm back in the music industry. I just dropped some hard ass singles, mm -hmm. and I got a lot of records. Wasn't it design or something? Did you have an album well, that had, came I, out? You I had, had an album, album that came out when, when you first, I first came home. First came home, yeah. I dropped the album called Designer Trap. Designer Trap. And I was, I how was, did it go? It, it did. To be real with you, man, it did real good, man. Like it did real good. But how big was that accomplishment with you coming home, being that it was your first project? That had to be huge. It was. For a, you. It was. It was an amazing accomplishment and experience. Because, because yeah, because it defied. It, it went against all odds. Everybody told me I wasn't gonna rap, couldn't rap, wasn't it, it was over with. Mm -hmm. So by me getting out, doing the d designer trap, you know, finding that, finding that 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 ambition mm -hmm. to 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 do it, you know, it it was major for me. Mm -hmm. A lot of people expect you when you get out after serving that type of time that you're gonna be sleeping on your mama couch somewhere, trying to find a job in a warehouse or Walmart, so on and so forth. But shit, now I got out and I, I put my feet to the ground. But where did the motivation come from? Because you said when you got out, you, no, but you said when you got out, you did not want to rap no more. So where did that come from where you like, okay, let me just go ahead and what try sparked again. It? What, what, yeah, what what sparked? Sparked? I, I didn't want to rap, but I seen, I know that it could be done. And I seen the type of money these niggas, these fake ass niggas rapping by my lifestyle. A lot of these niggas out here rapping by my lifestyle. You see what I'm saying? I, I really did those things. I really caught those cases. I really motherfucking did that street shit. Mm -hmm. I, I'm really him who, who who these niggas rap about. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So what the fuck I look like letting a bunch of fake ass niggas rap about this shit and I'm really living this shit. You see what I'm saying? So I can do this shit myself. You know, I, I, I get a lot of, it made me feel good to be recognized. You know, I had a little baby walk up to me one time. Like yeah, go man, you 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 a real nigga, dog. I, I look up to you. You know, two chain. I didn't even know these people knew me. Knew you walked mm -hmm. up on me like go man. I love what you doing, man. You want the realest in it. You know, Boosie was so excited to do a motherfucking song with me that he he gave me another song. Like nigga, you ain't got nigga. That's on that nigga. That's on the house, nigga. I got you, nigga. You you a real nigga. Wow. You know, so you know for me to be recognized like that, you know that that shit made me feel real good. Coming from where I come from, you know, I go to the BET Awards. I'm saying, bitch, I'm right there in the motherfucking second row, right, right behind Uzi Vert and JT when they got into the little incident. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, Stevie Wonder invited me to his motherfucking crib to have a one on one dinner with him. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I fuck with niggas like Dave Chappelle. These niggas fuck with me. Like they call me on the phone. These niggas respect me. They respect my legacy. They respect my my story. You know what I'm saying? Travis King, a lot of major people. You know, I'm, the other day I'm ki kicking it with the United States Senator. Me and him golfing together. That's the dope. governor of Georgia. I told the governor of Georgia, shit, my nigga, you know, we out here golfing, but, you know, I'm a street dude. 
So if you, you ever hear, you ever get a car that I didn't shot one of these bitch ass niggas in the face, I need y'all to come park me out of prison. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you know, no, 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 you went in there the way you both did. Yeah, do. I'm telling the governor straight up. Like, yeah, we out here, we, 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 we hitting these goddamn balls out here. You know what I'm saying? We out here doing this golf shit, but nigga, I might shoot a nigga later on in the afternoon. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> gold so, mouth, man. Yeah. You a real one, man. That's that's to be expected, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, like you for you to go through what you went through and then to be home now, man. And then you know, at the end of the day, it could have went a whole another way. You might not have made it home. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You went through a lot, bro. I went through a lot in that moment. Now you home, man. nigga. Pose to celebrate. Yeah. You, I'm and, being real. And it's crazy because you would exp you would think you know people. That see your struggles, that know your struggles. You would think, you know, like I got my own everything. I don't ask a nigga for shit. Okay. I do for people. I'm the person that that's giving. I'm the person that's always you blessed, helping bro. people out. And I thank God, Alhamdulillah. So it's like, but you would think that people who are in real position would, would try to be like, damn, my nigga, you know, I know you're a real one. So shit, I'm gonna I'm give you a, a help. And the only person that has done that is my little brother, Rollo. Okay, you know Rollo found going who's in prison. He get out in like a month or so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so he he didn't reached out and he didn't you know when I he heard I got out of prison you know what I'm saying he he made it to where you know things were a lot better for me, and that's the shit that I thought Jeezy would do. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying the shit that Rollo do is the shit that I thought Jeezy would do mm -hmm. due to our rich history. You see what I'm saying? But everybody, they they, they, they everybody on their, their, their different paths. You see what I'm saying? But I know if if I was in you know other people's situations and shit, and I know this 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 is a solid one. This is a nigga who who never told, who never went against the grain, who did everything the right way according to whatever we believe in, a believe in. Then I gotta fuck with you wholeheartedly. You see what I'm saying? And so when I hear people like Lil Baby, when I see people like you know Two Chain, people like Ti salute me and respect, you know, give me that respect. You know, it made me feel good because. It shows me that the work that I'm putting in is not going unrecognized. Man, you you already got it though, you know. And to be honest with you, again, I just said this earlier on the other interview, man. Them doors that don't open for you, that's God, man. Keeping them closed because you don't need them niggas around you. Yeah, I'm being real. That, for that's real. the whole game. That's the way. Don't I look at that's. Mm -hmm. I, I be like, okay, I hear you, because I don't want to be around no nigga that really ain't. I don't care how much money it's gonna bring me. I don't want it if it ain't right, bro. Yeah, because if. The thing about it is that if a nigga don't fuck with me, I don't fuck with you. Period. That's it. I ain't no dick rider. I don't give a fuck how much money you got. I don't give a fuck about how much fame you got. It's about being a real and genuine person. Because to be real with you, man, I lost my nephew. Wow. Like like two, three weeks ago. Man, man. sorry to hear that, bro. Mm -hmm. And me and him, he was he was a, a, a young kid, Tory. He was 27 years old. Wow. He man. had eight months. Before he was about to become a, a real motherfucking doctor. Wow. Mm. And he never did anything wrong. He never sold a, a bag of weed. What happened? He never cursed. He was in, he was driving up the interstate, going to pick up his, his seven month year old son. And some nigga running from the police or whatever, going the opposite way of the interstate. So he coming, you know, at six in the morning down the interstate, you know, like right. anybody, any one of us right. would. And here come another car. Flying like a bat out of hell, going 90 miles an hour, coming up the wrong side of the interstate. My nephew never seen it crash. Boom. He had, he left two of his Benzes in my in, in my garage. Um, and he was like, Uncle, I'm on the way up there. We finna go get the one to fix in the Benz. And um, he never made it back. When I woke up, I was getting called saying that he was dead. And mm. it broke my heart. But I said that to say this. You can literally be here today, man. You can have the world. Tomorrow. And be gone tomorrow. That's real. So love who you love and treat people the way you would want to be treated, man. Cause all this money and shit, this, this shit ain't this shit is nothing, man. At the end of the day, we all gotta be, we all going back to our creator. And it's about your deeds. Leave a legacy. Yeah, it's about the deeds. Like, God don't give a fuck about your Rolls Royce. Mm -hmm. God don't give a fuck about how many bitches you didn't fuck. Mm -hmm. How many people you didn't did wrong? God care about how many people you didn't did right. Mm -hmm. How many people you helped? How many people you helped? So that that that's what impressed me. So if a motherfucker ain't out here, you know what I'm saying, trying to empower others and and build their communities and shit, all that other shit, and doing trying to do right by by God or whoever, whatever you believe in, 
then all that other shit, man, that shit ain't hitting on nothing. Wow. How would you want people to remember you? I want I want people to remember me as a good hearted, genuine stand up person that that really want to see the best in every individual on earth. Period. You feel me? I want to see the best in you. I don't even know you. I don't even know you like that. I want to see the best in y'all. What the fuck can I do to bring out your best? Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck if you outshine anything I got going on. I don't care about that. I want to see your best. What the fuck can I do to help you get to the best you? Man, I... I Man, I thank you for coming on the show. Let me ask you, I got to ask this, and I, because you this your first time on the show. Top three artists of all time, dead or alive. Any genre. Top three artists. Hey, let me tell y'all something, right? <laughs> what? I want I want to tell y'all this, right? When I was growing up, I always, like, looked up to Tupac. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But let me tell you some real shit. Tupac is, is like, he's one of the greatest. Mm -hmm. and, you know, he had a wonderful legacy. But I don't listen to Tupac no more. Wow. You know why? Why? And I don't even, I love Tupac, but I don't want to hear no more Tupac records. Why? Because Tupac was obsessed with death. Yeah, definitely. And every song, every motherfucking song Tupac got. Not every song. Well, well, <laughs> well show me one that's not. Dear Mama. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure he ain't said when I die, blow me a motherfucker. No. Well, he ain't putting that much depth in that song. I'm about to, to go back so. over those lyrics. But every song that I listened to a Tupac, it, it had a deaf reference in it. Yeah. And we speak things into existence. Mm -hmm. He spoke on death so much to where he died. But we all got to die one day. But we don't have to die that, that early and that young, mm -hmm. I don't think. However, we don't know that. That's 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 in that's God's, God's plan. Right. I agree with you though. I'm just saying, there's like, power. No, uh, there's, there's power, power in what the tongue. Talking there's power. Yeah, power in the tongue. It's power in the tongue, and he spoke death so much. Mm -hmm. So I was around the other day, about two, three months ago, and listened to Pupa, and I found myself saying, "When I die, I want to be a girl, living legend." You know, I don't want to die. It's too early to so die you right don't now. Don't speak on it. I want to speak on that right now. Let me live. I want to hear some shit like, "When I live, I want to." Yeah, yeah. 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 That's what I want to hear. Get you know my roses saying? while I'm here. No, Get my mom, yeah. I, I, so I stopped listening to that. Not that it's, I have, you know, no, nah, much love. I love the brother. You know, Ralph, are you trying to tell us that's not going to be a part of your top three? I'm trying to tell you that <laughs> a, a, a point that I that I learned just yeah. by being wise and grown now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Something that, that dawned on me. Yeah. I said, this guy was actually obsessed with death. Yeah. Why was that. He a lot of rappers like are that? too. A lot of rappers are. Well, you got to realize uh, what was Biggie's last last time? Life after death. Mm -hmm. Just death. But uh, I mean, Pac, like all his songs, like Bury Me, Death, Death Around the Corner. That was see, a phase was, people were going through during that time. It was a phase. Yeah. And, I, and, and that phase is over with. <laughs> now now, let's, now let's pop let's, let's pop, pop some bottles out. and celebrate life. Bro, but that's what, what I'm saying. That's what that whole movement was about. Like when I look at Birdman, like when I, when I look at uh, them, you know, uh, and just the money and talking about the they having brought a party. In, they brought in that the new, was that cash money era. They brought in they brought that in that that new life celebration. Yeah, and that's why they went so hard. Because if you see if when you study the history of rap, you'll see that Tupac had came. Then Master P came with that same Tupac style, the same the same energy with Tupac. Then Birdman them came with that new nigga. No, we living life. We, we popping bottles. Money, we celebrating. We got all this stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, Rolexes and entrepreneurship. And, and entrepreneurship. And so that's why they popped and took off like that because that was something that we needed. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That was something that we needed. So when it comes to, you know, my my top three rappers of all time. I gotta say, go mob, go mob, go mob, and look, and make sure y'all you right. make sure y'all go check out my new single, man, which is called Street Shit. Street Shit. Yeah, and I'm about to drop. I'm about me and Jeezy got a record, a new that, one. Yeah, we got a new record. It's called Getting It. How did you make that happen? You gotta tell me that, bro. You can't do yeah, me like that, bro. Huh? How did you make that happen? <laughs> Nigga, can't, everybody else ain't been able to reach him. You, you, you playing games, so you don't want to tell me what's going on. I need go mouth. Yeah. How the hell did you make that happen? Um, um, I made it happen like this, man. So one day, you know, since I've been out, this is it right here. 
Hold on, it's me and Jeezy right here. So yeah. How'd you make it happen? You gotta give me the love. You can't bring it up and not tell me the story. Hey, shout out to my manager Lowe's, man. Here I come, man. <laughs> um, let me get up out of here. Um, so yeah, so you know, me and Jeezy had been, you know, discussing the issue of me and him linking back up doing a mixtape together. Okay. And um, you know, doing a bunch of records together. So, you know, finally, you know, we we went we went ahead and got a couple records done. That's good. We did a couple records and you know, I had been keeping them in the cut. So now we about to get ready to release the record. Um, you know, we got the whole team behind it. And it's called Getting It. You know what I'm saying? Gold Mouth Fan going featuring Jeezy. So it's it's a real tough record. And we got a remix of that same record. Visuals coming with it? Yeah, visuals coming with Hard. it. We, we about to drop it real, real soon. My manager, Lowe's. Shout out to Lowe's. Um, we, whenever we get this date down pack, you know what I'm saying? We finna drop these records. And you know what I'm saying? We finna go up. In the meantime, my little brother, Rallo, he about to come home. He come home in a, in a month, month and a half from prison, you know what I'm saying? He then did six and a half years. Rollo found going. Shout out to my little brother Rollo, loving the death. Oh, yeah. Um, so we found it's, it's, we about to take over. It's about to be a movie, man. Man, last question. For oh, we got oh yeah. So, uh, last uh, question. This just in. No, that's last question because I know you gotta go. But I wanted to ask you. So how did you meet Dave Chappelle? I met Dave Chappelle through my partner, GTO. Um, King, King and GTO, you know what I'm saying? They they introduced me to Dave Chappelle, you know, but Dave Chappelle's a Muslim. A lot of people don't know that. I knew that. Yeah, he's a Muslim. And, you know, when when, when they introduced me to him and he took a, a liking into me. And so, you know what I'm saying? We built a, a real good relationship and I appreciate that relationship that we do have. Wow. Well, uh, yeah, you got to get him in a video. He got to do it. Yeah, you know, I, I feel like, you know what I'm saying? There's levels to it. People want to see me work. Of course. They want to see me put in that work, you know what I'm saying? Because they had to put in a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And so people want to see me working. And once they see that I'm really a worker and I ain't trying to just, you know, come up off them, then, you know, they, they willing to do whatever for me. But they know I ain't like that anyway. I'm a self-made nigga, so they, they know what it is. Who, with me. who else would you like to work with in the music? I, to be honest with you, man, um, there's a lot of artists I like out there. To, I like to work with motherfucking Jay-Z, man. You like to work with Jay? Yeah, I like to work with Jay Z. I can't lie. I love to work with Jay Z. I love to work with somebody like Rihanna. You know, somebody oh. that I know when this motherfucking record come out, bitch is is up. You know what I'm mean? saying? <laughs> bitch is gone. <laughs> Man. I don't want, I don't hey, want no half-ass niggas. Listen. Don't put me on no chat with no half-ass <laughs> niggas out here. You keep them. <laughs> Who I want to work with? I want to work with the motherfucking upper echelon, the goats. That's all. The Jiggers, yeah. the Rihanna's, the motherfucking Beyonce. I already know soon the motherfucking record drop it's bitches up. up. It's up. You know what I'm man, thank you for coming yeah. on the show, man. Hey, man, how can people get a hold of you if they're trying to reach out, man, to work with you? Want to yeah, get a feature so, or something like that? Yeah, so my IG is Goldmouth Fam Goon, G O L D M O U F underscore Fam Goon, F A M G O O N. You know what I'm saying? They can holler at my, my manager, Los. His info on my IG page, um, my motherfucking Facebook, same shit, go my fan, go on TikTok, Twitter, everything. You can't lie when you come back, cause you coming back once you drop this whole this whole movement with the the new project. Yeah. You got to come back through and see Boss Talk once it drops. Oh yeah, hold up, man. I'm sorry, man. I gotta give a shout out to my partner Ivory Scott. Man. Okay. He's a great writer, you know what I'm saying? I, I link, I had to swallow my pride and link up with with Ivory Scott, sure. him and Hitmaker. You know they do a lot of writing for a lot of major artists. So he wrote a lot of a lot of records. You know he you know co-wrote a lot of records on my new my new project, which is called Now and Never. That is about to come out, and I want to make sure that I, I, I give my nigga a shout out because I love Ivory Scott. He's he's a goat. How how important is it to pick the right people to work with when you're dealing with today's, from what you've seen since you've been home? You've been home now three years. This independent movement that's going on with all the all the you know the artists is you know it ain't big on the deals like it used to be. Like uh, how important is it to build up the right team of people around you to work with when you're doing a project? Man, all that, you know it's always good. No matter if you're doing a project, I mean in life you gotta life. build up. You gotta have the right people around you. But you know you have to connect the dots. It, it ain't something that comes overnight. You have to, you know, damn, say, you know, this person is very good at managing. This person right here is very good at writing. This, you know, you, you just got to build a team around you. And a lot of things just fall in place, man. When you when you got a sincere heart, when you genuine, a lot of people want to work with you. And so far, that's how it's been with, with myself. 
you know, a lot of people want to work with me. People like Bigger Rankin. Yeah. You know, shout, shout, out, out, shout out to Bigger Rankin. Yeah. He, you know, he called me all the time and give me advice and, you know, let me know that, you know, I'm, 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 I'm him. He always let me know that I'm him. So I appreciate getting advice and wisdom from brothers like that. People like Rollo, you know, he called me all the time and let me know the moves that I should be making. You know, Los, you know, he always in my corner. You know, my partner GTO, you know, Keen, um, Travis, you know what I'm saying, the whole Chappelle team, country. A lot of people, man, so many people fuck with me because they know I'm authentic, you know. So I just appreciate all the people that that fuck with me, that that's there for me. That, that want to see me win, you know what I'm saying? Versus the fuck nigga, you know what I'm saying? I think, yeah, and you, yeah, hey man, thank you so much for coming on the show. You already know, thank, thank you for you. having me, Big bro. Big love, it's been another great segment. A Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. Where the oh, bosses yeah. talk. Man.